Chips and caviar. Chips and caviar. Hungry for current events, business knowledge, and some jokes. And of course, chips and caviar. Welcome back to Chips and Caviar with Aaron Singerman and Rob Bailey. Or we could say Rob Bailey and Aaron Singerman. No, it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. Okay. Well, we're going to talk about uh, business partners. Mm. I think business partners is really applicable to just about anybody wanting to start a business because there is some, of course, desire for multiple reasons to have a business partner, whether it's to get more, to get money that you need, mm -hmm. to get somebody to add, uh, add value in terms of brain power or doing a job that you can't do or whatever, or just because you think it would be cool. Someone showing up with money when you don't have it. Yeah, there's a lot of reasons to have a business partner, and there's definitely a lot of people out there that have positive business partners that it, that is propelled them into new success, but there's probably even more that, uh, that had problems with a business partner because it changes your relationship. You're, you, sometimes yeah. you can lose a friendship. I've certainly have, um, in the past. And, uh, sometimes people choose a business partner for a poor reason. So we figured we'll tell a little bit about uh, our personal experiences mm -hmm. and then give some advice for people out there starting a business that are thinking of having a business partner. Yeah. You know, so, uh, you want to go first? Tell yeah. your business partner story. Oh, uh, geez. All right. So growing up, I knew nothing about business mm -hmm. um, and went into business uh, with a guy. I don't really want to say his name. No. Don't, um, don't. Okay, perfect. So uh, Dan and I sort of went into business with a guy and learned very quick what the business world is like, right? And all of a sudden we sort of lost control of like what we were doing. I it just felt very strange. And then we had a huge falling out. Um, I got outsmarted at every turn and essentially I was just a happy artist kid who was excited to be doing something. Right. And I think that's happens a lot in business is you get very excited, right? You're starting a, a business with your boy, things are starting to go well and you don't even think about, Hey, two years from now, when we grow apart, what's going to happen. Yeah. Right. It's, the, it's almost like the last thought. And that's why contracts I think are so important. Um, cause contracts don't matter until they do. Yeah. Right. So that was my first experience. And I had a very hard time dealing with that, right? Because I think that I was involved, Dana was involved, and uh, I was young. So honor and ego and all those things, right? So uh, in my head, my head kept going to like violence or talking shit. <laughs> and it took me a long time to realize like the greatest thing I can do is win, right? Like if I move on from here and I get bigger and better, they'll have to watch me do that. Right. It's like uh, it's like you turn down a girl in high school and then you see her sure. when she's like 25 and she's like super hot. And you're like, oh, my God, look how hot you are now. And she's like, yeah, dickhead, you treated me like shit in high school. But look at me now. Right. So the look at me now thing that always fueled me on the backside was like, I'm going to show them. Right. I'm going to show mm -hmm. them. I'm going to show them. Um, and then, you know, that was my first partnership. And well, it sounds like it sounds like to me that that, that it was a really positive thing. Oh, so you the, learned one, from the experience. One of the most positive. So I call it, it motivated you. I call it free college. Yeah. Right. And I'm, I I try to frame a lot of things as free college. Um, didn't finish college. Uh, college was very expensive. I couldn't really afford it, and didn't feel like I was getting anything out of it. So I left. Um, and now I look for things that give me free college. You know, I think my relationship working with you, we were partners. Same thing. Did it work out great? Eh, debatable. Not right? really. <laughs> but it did in the end, though. I mean, I, I learned, but but same thing. I learned a lot, right? Yeah. I learned a lot. And I looked at that as free college. Yeah. Like I saw how someone other than myself ran a business. Um, I saw that things that they valued, uh, how fast they moved, the decisions they made. Um, I mean, you and I started uh, run everything together. And I, like, I remember conversations of you being like, ah, name doesn't matter. Like you and Dana are going to drive it. And I was like, no, name matters more than anything. Um, I mean, I remember the first big blow up that like, so pulling back, we were partners. Yes. And so Aaron said, I really, really want to work with you. Mm -hmm. And I was like, cool, man, I don't really want to do this. And you kept, you kept on me. Uh -huh. And then finally we said, okay, we started. I sold you on the idea. You sold me. You were really, you're a good salesman. Uh, number one closer. Yes. Right. <laughs> so we started the company and we started with one product called Onward, which I still sell today. And I think it's a fantastic product. And yeah. we, t and, and how, I don't know how many samples we got to get the right sample, but we, I know we made you go through hell. Yeah. Not much more than, uh, than, yeah. than we do or in the historically that we had done at the time, you were very particular, very particular yeah, where it was like, this was good, but it was like eight. 
It's not a 10. Yeah. I'd be like, well, an eight's pretty good. I mean, it's a powder, you know. Looking back now, um, we were being way too hard on everything because our, our name was attached to it, right? And that's sort of where I got to experience like the difference in a partnership. Well, you you are somebody who um, it's very difficult to let let loose any kind of control yes. over anything you do. And you've gotten way better. I've gotten way at, better. Yeah. But I, I initially you I, were like, I'm going to do everything myself. And then anything I can't do myself, I almost don't want to do. Yeah. And then I pushed you to, to, which is also very unique because as a partnership, everyone's dealing with something different, right? So you were on the backside of the partnership. I was on the front side. And so I had, you know, I had me not really knowing what I was doing. So I was throttling back and I'm also trying to protect my wife. Right. So I have this like husband ego protection thing going on for her. So like, no, this has to be perfect if she's going to represent it. So same thing. It didn't seem that complicated when we started, but then all of a sudden we got into it and it got very complicated and then sales did extremely well. Yeah. And you know, you weren't ready on the customer service side, not to point fingers. It's true. Um, then same thing. It's like, we need to launch another flavor. And I remember you made a flavor without asking me <laughs> and I remember trying it and it was good. Yeah. It was, uh, we should have okayed it. I think it was like a uh, mountain blast or something yeah, like you that. You wanted to destroy it all. <laughs> and I was like, no, 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 we can't you, sell this. And yeah. you're like, why not? And I was like, well, I want my people to approve this. You can't just make flavors. Right. And you're like, oh, this guy's going to be really hard to work with. <laughs> um, so, I mean, our, yeah, you were like, we can't sell it. I'm like, well, we have a thousand of them. <laughs> so you're like, oh, we can't. I mean, we just can't sell it. I'm like, no, you no. got to do it. Yeah. So, I mean, what it came down to is I, I was, I was very young. Uh, I think, you know, you were young. I think you've, you've come a f leaps and bounds since then. And so have I. Right. Yeah. But for two, you know, kids, right. I think we maybe even were still in our twenties or early thirties or something like that. You were early thirties. I was 35 or something. Okay. 33. I'm still early thirties. Yeah, 30, we're still yeah. youngsters. I think um, I was 33. So you were like, you know, you were, I might you were like, like 29, 29 yeah, something yeah. like that. Um, but dude, just like this, just realizing that somebody else has, you know, a, a big say and can make decisions and you might not agree with their decisions. And we didn't have a plan in place to how right. do we vote on these things. So, uh, that went sort of good for a while, learned a bunch of stuff. And I will say in, in your defense or in the, in the, in, in, in talking about this, that I do move very fast. And as a business partner, one of the things that I know I'm not good at and that it's like, you know, I almost like should have been more transparent is that I move very fast. Really? And, it's and, awesome to watch. And I don't really contemplate if I think that I'm right or I know that I'm right, I just do it. Mm -hmm. And so that's, that was a problem with all my business partners to some degree or another um, is like, and that's why I can't have that. I, I don't have those relationships. Mm -hmm. There's no such thing as a, a 50, 50 business. I have a private equity partner in Redcon and they own 24%. Mm -hmm. And I, I told them, if you want to buy in, you have to understand I'm happy to hear your advice. Mm -hmm but I'm going to do what I want to do. Whatever I think is right for the business. That's why you're interested in buying in. Yeah. You have, you cannot have control over any say. Yeah. And like Eric Hart is earned, who's my president at Redcon. I've given him sweat equity, but I'm still the boss. Yeah. So like he can tell me what he thinks. And I love that. And mm -hmm. I appreciate that from everybody on the team, but ultimately I'm going to do what I want to do, whatever I think is right. And I'm not going to necessarily wait for Eric's opinion all the time. Yeah. And it can be annoying. And I know for you, like you made a great example where I yeah. should have asked you, but I just did it. So once again, it was free college. I got to watch someone work at that pace. Um, and you got to watch someone that was worried about details. Yeah. Like but really, too. really, really worried about how do we talk to the customer after they purchase while they're purchasing. And you were like, it doesn't, you know, I remember arguing about how the bottles showed up in which bags. And you're like, this is the cheapest and fastest. Like we're this. And I was like, I understand that, but I want them to have a really good presentation. So I, I think that we both learned a lot from each other. Right. So I think there's a huge benefit to partnerships and then there's also a huge benefit to closing down partnerships. Right. And I think that, uh, if you can meet, remain friends on the other side, but that's why contracts are so important. Right. And I, I yeah. think understanding roles, I, you know, we can also talk about, uh, it's a bummer too. So one of the things that we should say about the contracts is that that sometimes ruins potential partnerships because you have to plan the divorce before Dude, you're getting it's, married. It's, it's like a prenup. It's a right? prenup. It's, a prenup. So it's, it's the same thing when you do a prenup. I'm sure I've never had to do it, but if you sit down and talk about how much money you're going to get when we break up, 
It's not very romantic. Exactly. And same thing with a business partner when you say, well, look, if this happens, this, if this happens, and the kind of like a bummer. The weird thing about marriage is you're entering into a contract yeah. by getting married, but you're not finishing the contract, which is a strange thing. So, I mean, I'm in another partnership, right? Like, so I'm in a partnership with my wife. Like, of course. Uh, although she might not own everything or whatever, there, there, I found that the more that we have a very, because everyone wants to say, how are you guys still together, still business partners after this long like, well, it's pretty, it's pretty clear. Uh, we had not a written down contract, but a very good understanding that her and I as business partners is she follows my lead. Right. So I go, I make every single decision. I do everything. And she's on board with that. And she's on board. Yeah. She is on board to hop on the Rob Bailey train. And as fast as I want to go, as much coal as I want to throw in that motherfucker and go, yeah. she so, roots for me. Yeah. Now the one rule is if she does speak up, I have to listen. Right. So I can make six months of decisions, run, 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 run. And then six months in a day, she's like, Hey, we shouldn't do that. And I'm like, okay, cool. I'll listen to you. So that's sort of how we operate. And she obviously doesn't abuse that, 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 no, uh, no, 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 that ability because she only speaks up when that's she important. really she feels, feels so. and outside of that, she trusts me, which yeah. is another reason that I think we've been so powerful together, right? Yeah. Is because I'm not arguing with someone to make a decision every time there's, there's a clear leadership, right? Yes. And I think that that's one of the reasons that you and I didn't really work out is because I mean, everyone had a say in everything and we would just butt heads. Yeah. We have two people that are t two alphas that are, that are uh, running into each other. Yes. And so like, um, I don't know if I should tell my business thing first. You know, my business thing is, I'm not going to go into the details cause it's like a whole story of my, yeah, you can just my touch on it quick. My partnership dispute is very similar in the sense that you had two guys, me and my business partner, PJ Braun, uh, who's still in prison right now to this day. Um, and we got for Blackstone Labs, although that's another story for a different day. But we were this two guys were best friends. Uh, he's my best friends at, at the time for a decade, uh, like family. And as friends, we were great friends. And like me and you, we had a really synergetic, uh, synergetic relationship. Um, you know, remember we talked about uh, parasitic versus yeah. know, so, so he, our relationship was 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 great. We were we were better together. Um, but as business partners, we didn't have very defined roles. We were both doing a lot of the same stuff. The gray area. Yeah. And so yeah. we were both kind of marketing. We were both the face of the company. We we're both. And, and so as a result of these two guys who, who have really uh, strong personalities, we bumped into each other a lot. Mm -hmm. And after years of bumping into each other, we couldn't like, we didn't like each other anymore. We hated each other. Yeah. And, and, uh, and as a result of that, we ended up having this huge partnership dispute, which is a story for another day. Cause I'm happy to tell all the details of it. But I think for this, particular podcast, the important thing is the, is the lesson of, well, if you're going to have a business partner, how do you have a successful business? Do you even want to have a business partner? So I would say the number one thing is, does that business partner have something, whether it's money or skill that you don't have? Yes. So for example, Rob is an incredible artist, very talented artist. I have no artistic ability. So if Rob hypothetically brings art to our partnership, this is great. We can do this together. Um, for me, I have great business sense. Mm -hmm. So I have a good gut for business sense. Uh, Rob does too. So, you know, but if we're partners, he has to say, if this is the roles, Hey, you're going to handle the P and L you're going to make the, the buying decisions. You're going to deal with inventory management because that's not my strong suit. Or even if it is, that's going to be your role. And a lot of times in business partnerships that don't go well, people don't have those defined roles and they go, well, I'm really good at that too. So I'm going to do it too. And then you have disagreements based on both of you guys doing the same thing. So you, somebody needs to, one of the partners needs, or the, your partner, in this case, from talking directly to you, this person's listening, mm -hmm. you need to have something different than your partner. If they're yes. bringing the money and that's all you want them to do, like for TriVest for me, for my private equity partner, I'm happy to hear your opinion, private equity partner, but I really want your money. And that's yes. it. That's really what it comes down and to. And make it clear. Yeah. You're coming into this relationship because you have money that I want. Totally okay. So that's the deal with us. Now, I'm also happy to hear their opinions, but ultimately they're not going to tell me you need to do this or that because I don't want that. On the flip side, you may have somebody with a, a talent that you don't have. You say, this is what we need. I need from you. This is what I'm going to bring to the deal. And you guys make an agreement that those are your two roles. I strongly suggest you don't bring in a partner that you can't identify what that is. Yes. So if you don't know what I you need Rob, in my case, I need Rob Bailey for, how is he going to be an add value to my situation? I like him. Yeah, yeah. If you just, I like them. If we're we're best friends, we're gonna have we're fun. Both, we're both hard workers. People. I remember yeah. in the very beginning, somebody that I was close to. I told him that I because I gave PJ his equity in the company. I had the opportunity to do it all by myself, and I decided it would be more fun to do it with PJ, mm -hmm. right? Because he's my best friend. Yeah. And I remember distinctly telling that to this person, and them going, 
why don't you just pay him as an athlete? Or why don't you just like give him a job instead of giving him half the company? Yeah. And I remember being like, no, that sucks. I want to do it with my best friend. We're going to have so much fun. Yeah. Right. And, uh, and obviously that was, you know, it is what it is and you can't go back and change anything. I'm happy that things happened the way they did. And that's something another show is talking about how situations, even bad ones can turn into really great ones. Always. My, uh, one of my superpowers is resiliency Yeah. because I always look for that opportunity and disaster. Mm -hmm. And, um, and so in this case, I bumped into him partnership wise, but it didn't have to be that way. I could have hired him as an employee. He'd been very happy to be the main athlete for the company, yeah, but, I didn't even, but I didn't even think about that. I thought about like, it's going to be fun to do it together. That's not a good reason to, ha mm -hmm. to have a partner. Ultimately, in my opinion, if you don't need a partner, don't get one is mm -hmm. that it's better to do it on your own. If you can do it on your yeah. own. And if you do get a partner, Think about the fact that you want to have control of think your, about of the your split. thing. Yeah, think, think about, about the, the split. split. Think about the sale of the company. Right. Think about, um, so for example, I bought a house with my friend Sean Whalen from Lions Not yeah. Sheep. And he was like, yeah, let's just get it, 50-50. And I was like, hey man, so in a year, what if I make tons of money and I don't want this house anymore? Mm -hmm. Do you do you, do you buy, buy out, yeah. do you buy me out at, so the house is, whatever the house is, let's say that for an easy number is a million dollars, right? Yeah. Um, so let's say, do you buy me out at 500,000? Or do we see what the market's worth? Like maybe totally different. Because if the market's worth two million instead of a million, all of a sudden I'm gonna say, hey, I went out of the house, um, give me a million dollars, or I'm gonna sell it to some random guy you don't like. Right. And he's like, oh yeah, I never even thought of that. And I was like, well, these are things that we need to talk about. Yeah. Because I feel like we're gonna own this house together forever. It's gonna be great. But, but if it's not, what if I can't afford it in a year from now? What if you get divorced? D does your what like does your wife get half of yeah, it your half? So so it's, yeah. it's, it's really, really hard conversations, but they're a lot easier to have when you're still friends. Right? No, I agree. I totally um, agree. I think that's great advice. Yeah. I think the things that people could take away from this episode is when you get a partner, make sure that they have a defined role, make sure they're bringing value to yep. the table, make sure you discuss the uncomfortable stuff while you're still buddies yep. before there's any reason to get it all on paper. And then ultimately, you know, do you want one at all? Yeah. And you have to think real honestly, is it something that you can do on your own? And I'm a huge fan. Take risks. Yes. Take risks because, and I, I don't know if you know this. So when Flagner fail, right, I had my, the big falling out with the other guy. So my trust for everyone left, right? Mm -hmm. Like gone. I was like, fuck everybody. I, I'm, I own this ship. And I started Flagner fail and very desperate, right? Um, very, very desperate. Uh, couldn't, I mean, our hot water heater was out. So we were showering at the gym every morning and then coming back at night to shower at the gym because we $700 seemed like something we would never get. I was like, oh, we just don't have hot water. No big deal. So I had never known anyone with money growing up. And when we first started Flagner Fail, there's a dude, the power lifter, awesome dude, forget his name. But uh, he came up, he's like, hey, man, this clothing line uh, that you're starting, I absolutely love. I want to I want to invest in it. Mm. And I was like, oh, well, what do you want to invest? And he was like, I want to invest $10,000. Thank God you didn't take that. And I was like, out. and I was like, oh my God, like, yeah, we've been around a month and we've made $1,700. Like this guy's coming around. What, what is that? Six months of, yeah, right? it's huge. Oof. So he's going to give me six months of money for, yeah. you know, he's like, I don't know, like <laughs> give me like 30% or something like, yeah. and, and he wasn't trying to get one over him. Yeah. The dude was a fucking sweetheart, but because, right. So because of that last relationship that fell apart and I got yeah. that free college, that free emotional college. I was like, hey man, like, I think I just want to try this by myself. Yeah. Right. And looking back now, it's like, damn, that dude could have stepped into Ooh, right? big money. Like, oh, but instead I dodged it and it was made a million bit harder. And then think about the moves that I would have made. Right. And that's why I like the way that everything happens because my moves would have been completely different. I would have outsourced printing. Right. I would have had someone build the website. And we can talk about all those missteps that turned into my some of my biggest victories that defined me. But like I would have done everything different. Of course. So it's like it's interesting to look back and say, oh, cool. You know, I took a risk with the first partnership. It blew up and then made me think this certain way and taught me something which then catapulted me, you know. Uh, so I think that y you can take those risks, right? I, I mean, agree. learn as much as you can and, and be cautious, but every once in a while, shoot your shot and value and value what you have. Cause you knew you had something special. You mm -hmm. believed in, believed in yourself and you, uh, and you, did, I mean, it's like, obviously now it doesn't seem like a lot of money, but at the time it was tremendous. It was and you turned it down. And it I, I made the mistake of taking money when I shouldn't have, mm. uh, I took an investor, me and PJ, we took on this guy, Joseph Safina, and he bought in. It's a whole other story. I mean, of course, for, nothing. Stories. for He nothing. bought in for a million bucks and he closed the deal, which, you know, 
Private equity took them six months to close the deal yeah. and all this diligence. He saw that we were, you know, Exploding. meathead idiots yeah. and going up so fast. He found, I told him about the, the business. He came, saw the books. And within a day, he gave us the check for a million bucks and, and bought his shares. And you guys were just pumped. And we were, I mean, when you're, you know, we were a little further along than you were when you started financially. Yeah. But to to have a check for a million, when, of course, we had to split it and pay taxes. But that money was so huge. I mean, it was like I just reached a level that my parents never reached. You know, I reached a level that people that I you never know. thought you would. No, that I never thought I would. And it was such a big deal. And it ended up being where that guy got all his money back within a year because yeah. the profit of the business, his 30% split on the, on the money we were, you know, distributing out, he got his money back within a year. It's insane. And I remember thinking, God, we got this guy who's already causing troubles. It's causing a divide between me and PJ. Yep. And he made all his money back right away. And I could have, we could have split that money up and had it in anyway. Once again, think about what you learned. Think yeah, about learned a lot. the acquisition of, learned a lot. Uh, you know, some equity in this company and then everything you've put into here through all that hardship, learning the people yes. to avoid. Dude, free college, man. Free college. Free college. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you. If you liked it, please share it. Please tell your Please. friends. Uh, this is something that means a lot to us, and we appreciate every single one of you for listening. Thank you. Chips and caviar.